Kelly, we covered former President Trump together. Um, part of some some folks are asking, is this Trumpism 2.0? Is it sort of the, where, where the future of the Republican Party is going? But also, I wonder, when you think about the past of the Republican Party, this has been a party that's been really good at running on fear, running on people's emotions, and that gets people to the polls. Oh, very definitely. Fear, anger, and a sense of being um, somehow at, at peril drives people to the polls. And it is as old as elections, and it feels very contemporary as well. And so it has new names. It has new circumstances. It's driven by the moment we're in, especially uh, with uh, the parent relationship with the classroom that we've seen through COVID, uh, frustrated parents who were tired of all the rules and everything that was going on. Back in my local news days, I covered school board meetings. They were always interesting, but they were never the hotbed that they People have become now. Out, you're saying? Yes, and <laughs> and it really is a reflection of what's happening in communities, and it's an important thing to listen to what is there. And as you're saying, Democrats, frankly, both parties need to listen to what is being said and what it means to the people saying it. If the terms aren't quite accurate, the emotions underneath it really are reflecting something. And that's what they need to address with their policies and with how they're communicating to voters, because uh, those anxieties are real and uh, and they're very provocative in terms of turning out voters. But keep in mind when this issue started popping up back in the spring, American voters were actually in a pretty good mood over stimulus checks arriving in their mailboxes <laughs> and the vaccine rollout. We we're going to return to normal. Remember that? And so Republicans needed an issue, even if it was a manufactured one, to latch on to. But what's happened now is that Democrats, it's easy for them to dismiss this as a phony issue, but they dismiss it at their own peril. Um, and, and one Democratic advisor in Virginia told me the other week that, you know, if, if he were advising Tara McCall, if he would have tried to seize the conversation back by running on a plan to raise teacher pay and try and bring the education issue back into Democrats' corner. The problem for McAuliffe was that since he had already been governor, it was hard for him to convince voters that he would be doing something that maybe he failed to do over the four years of his term.